Good morning everyone. We are doing some farming today. Look at this, we are out in one of the fields that we have ploughed to put some barley in. I'm just going ahead of the drill which is behind me somewhere uh, with the rollers. Just trying to firm it all up. Makes it nice and easy then for Tom with his drill to uh, make a good job. So this field that we're in is called Sheridan. Um, it's actually fairly steep uh, out over that way. It doesn't appear to be on the camera, but it does drop off to a bit of a steep piece there. Um, and because it's been a grass lay, it ploughed up fairly plumb. Um, and Tom was just struggling a little bit to do a good job. Um, basically because he couldn't, couldn't get the grip down because it's just on fluffy dirt. So by rolling it like this, we're firming it all up. It's like driving on a road as opposed to a stone track, if you know what I mean, if you can't. See that everything's getting squashed nicely, and consolidated. Now that I've got a little bit ahead of him, I can do this in land rather than having to turn tight on myself all the time. Auto steer's doing its thing. Beautiful. Yes, we run Dalbo rolls, both in Cambridge rollers and also our flat rolls. Um, they do a very, very, very good job. One thing that might have been advantageous today would have been shatter boards, but it's doing a good enough job. Cruising along about eight and a half K. No engine load at all. Doing a, doing it nice and easy. I don't know how well you can see Tom there in his drill. He's got a 724 Fent. I think that's one of the new Gen 6 ones. Uh, and then a four meter horse drill. It's the same drill we use to drill our cereals back at Northwick. Um, so it can do a, it can do this either on plough ground um, or I believe you can go straight into stubble with it and do like a direct drill sort of job. The headlands where we've been turning, I went round twice to start with and now we're turning on them again. They, they work down really, really well. It's funny isn't it how you can have different sort of soil types in the same field. At the top here it's really really easy to break it down and smooth it out nicely. It's down the bottom where it's a bit more, I don't know, it ploughs up fresher would be the word I would use. A bit heavier perhaps. Um, it doesn't quite have the same impact running the rolls over it but yeah, look at that. Beautiful. We've got one little field through the trees there to do as well. So once we finish here we'll go out there and then um, Depending on how we're doing for time, we'll get the drone up and get a bit of footage of Tom drilling. He said we might even see Tom's dad tomorrow. He's going to come in with a sumo and sumo up the ground at home that we want doing. Get that ready to uh, get the beans in. Well, I have finished doing all the rolling. I've been in the little field and done that one. That was a bit of a neck acre. Um, I've actually dropped the rolls up here underneath the dual carriageway bridge. Just because we want to roll in the ground after Tom's finished drilling. Now it's supposed to be nice today and tomorrow, so we might as well let it pitch off in this sunshine, come back and drill it tomorrow. Um, come back and roll it tomorrow, I mean, not drill it. Tom's there drilling it now. Because um, any bits that are slightly fresh or whatever, we're just gonna make wheel marks. We don't wanna do that, so we'll let it dry off and then we'll come back and roll it again tomorrow. I'm just gonna chuck the drone up whilst I've got five minutes before going home. It is a bit windy, but we'll, uh, we'll chance it. We'll risk it for a biscuit. I had to get pretty creative here with how I wanted to unhook the rollers because uh, I left the stand at home and there's nothing here to put them on other than this bit of rotten tree that I found over there. That was attempt one. So far that's holding up. But yeah, let's chuck the old drone in the air, see what we can see.
we are off home. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of drone footage. I've been a proper good YouTubing farmer and not charged my drone for about three weeks. So I had a minimal amount of battery. Um, I thought Tom's kit looked quite smart there on the drone. The cows look happy as well. I'm gonna head home and see what else is on back there for the rest of the day. Probably carry this video on tomorrow when either we come back and roll this or when Jeremy turns up to do our sumoing at home. Now uh, we'll just see where we go. All right, I've just been out with a topper in the last field of stubble uh, ahead of the sumo, which has arrived a little bit earlier than expected. We were thinking it was coming tomorrow. It's actually turned up this afternoon. Um, Jeremy, which is Thomas's dad, is down there in it. And uh, he's done a done a mark around the field. He's been around once, sort of where the headland tram line would be. And uh, yeah, the soil is tacky. Very, very tacky. But it would appear that spraying it off and topping, especially the worst bits like the headland here, has done a, done a good job. He won't get it all done today. He will have to come back tomorrow and do some. So we'll try and get the drone charged up tonight and get back out of that tomorrow. But um, yeah, I've, I've not actually seen the sumo working before. So I might just hang around here for a couple of minutes and see it working. Basically, it's a load of legs followed by some discs and a roller on the back. And it's lifting the ground trying to relieve any compaction that we may have down in there without doing the job of a plow. So we're sort of just like lifting, mixing, and uh, this will now dry out, especially in this nice bit of wind. And hopefully this will cause a bit of germination from any weed seeds that are still lying about. And then we can come in again and um, give it a dose of glyphosate ahead of the drill. See, we got bits here where we've got water laying. So that's another reason we want to get all this up and lifted so that it can soak away somewhere. But this looks pretty good. So they run Fent 724s, that's what they got a fleet of. They got one 820, I think. And um, it's taken everything it's got with a load of weight on the front to get it up over the hill because it is just tacky. Um, We just lifted the legs up to their highest point. So me and Jeremy pulled the pins, lifted the legs um, up a hole, just to see if it'll make it a little bit easier on the tractor, um, which it should do, because it's technically not going as deep. It'd be absolutely fine going down the hill, it's coming up. But see if you can see the ground sort of lifting behind the back wheel, chucks it into the discs, and then packs it all back down again with a roller. leaves you with this really nice finish will hopefully dry out a bit as I said and then we'll um, get a good flush of weed and grass or whatever and have to get a good kill on it again you can see where the ground's compacted under my feet um, because we don't do any sort of controlled traffic or anything like that it all gets driven on anywhere and everywhere especially the bits where I've had my headland tram line here you see it's been wet and it's holding water that is absolutely no good so that'll that'll relieve that fantastically well hopefully with the legs in underneath and yeah hopefully we'll be able to get back out tomorrow and see a bit more of that working um so i say i'll charge up the drone we have got a busy day weighing cattle tomorrow so whether i will get the chance or not and we've got to go and roll that barley and oh, it's just there's jobs jobs and jobs you can see really well now from this angle where Thomas coming out to go with the uh, with the sumo before we done the spraying. See, it's all green there because I didn't go back over that with a sprayer. So all the bits around it we've sprayed and topped. And hopefully this time now, Jeremy will be able to uh, travel through it nice and easy. I've got to go and feed me calves. This thing needs a birthday because this is hanging in mud. Look at that, it's no good. They need sharpening. There's been a bit of rock activity there, look. But now we've finished topping things that probably shouldn't be topped with it. We can do that and it'll be ready for the next time someone wants to go and top some grass. Also, whilst I'm thinking about it, a bit of a shout out to the uh, young lad in Bo, who I drive past every morning on my way to work, who always puts his thumbs up to say hello. 
don't know who you are, but hello. We're back. It's the next day. We're actually going to come up and roll in this uh, barley that Tom drilled for us yesterday. Um, Looks like I've got a very soft tyre. There's a lot of weight on them. Look what I've just seen as I've come in the field. How about that for a mushroom? Look at that. My hand for scale. Anybody know what that is? I have no idea. Answers in the comments. We also have this. Look at that. Got mushrooms galore. Anyway, let's get back to what we're doing, which is rolling. Um, so Tom drilled all this yesterday. Look at when it's dried off. Perfect. I wish the soil was like this at home because uh, we are quite literally in a bit of a sticky situation as to what to do. Um, Jeremy sumoed one of the fields yesterday and I thought it came out really nice and he went into the next one and it just wasn't working. Um, everything's sort of balling up in the sumo. It's just so tacky. There's so much moisture in the top of the ground from the amount of grass that's on there. Um, it just wasn't working so they pulled out um, they thought they were making it, you know, worse. Um, or doing more harm than good is what I'm trying to say. So we're uh, currently debating what to do. Um, we want to put beans in, whether we just drill them straight in, but we got some compaction and we really wanted to lift out. I don't know. There's uh, a couple options floating around at the minute. But anyway, we're going to get on and roll this. And uh, that'll be a good job done, I reckon. You need to be in float. You could be doing within float as well. Now, some of you might be wondering why we roll the ground after it's been drilled. So I'm going to do my best to explain it for you. Now, those of you who are within the farming community and know why, just bear with me for a minute. Oh, right, I hope you appreciate the lengths I'm going to here. Anyway, this is the ground just in front of the rollers before they passed over it. You might be able to see here, there are some lines where the tines on the back of Tom's drill has um, covered over the seed that it has drilled. It leaves these tiny little ridges like this across the field. What we want to do is come along and just level them out as much as we can with the roller to leave a nice flat finish. Um, that way we get a really, really good seed to soil contact underground, which is what we want. And it also knocks these things, stones, down into the soil a bit so they don't stick up and risk damaging the combine or anything when it comes through. Now, the other reason we do it, and probably the most important one for us, is if you can see here, we've got a nice level surface where the roller has been. And here beside me, we're still on the rough stuff that hasn't been rolled yet. Now we're gonna put a pre-emergent herbicide on this field. And so what will happen is when this barley emerges out the ground, there'll also be some weeds and grasses and whatever else come up with it. So we're going to spray a pre-emergent herbicide on this field before any of that happens. That way, when the seeds come up out the ground, like this, I promise never to do that again. Once those seeds come up out the ground, they will go through that mat of herbicide that is on the soil, and anything that isn't barley will hopefully take in a bit of that herbicide and very quickly die off. Now, because this was a grass field, it is highly likely that a fair bit of grass will try and germinate through. So hopefully we'll get the pre-emergent on in good time, perhaps on Monday, and um, that will stop any of it being viable once it comes up out the ground. In front of the rollers, and that is the picture behind the rollers. Now I admit the shadows are a bit difficult, but hopefully you can see there's a line along there. Rolled, not rolled. Right, enough playing in the dirt, let's get back to work. When I say get back to work, what I mean is sit here and watch the auto steer do its thing. View out the back window. It is extremely satisfying, I enjoy it thoroughly, and hopefully we're doing a good job. Can you believe that we are kicking up dust in October? In Devon as well, that is unheard of. Oh, beauty. Right, just got to lock up the gate before I head home, but before we do, check out my grass seeds, yeah boy. Green tinge. all uh, various bits and pieces from our um, herbal lay mix we put in. That is what I call a great success. Look at it, it's a green. Right, Bruce has very kindly started feeding the calves for me, so we'll head home 
and give him a hand to finish up. Then it's the weekend, boys. So I've just realized I probably didn't do a very good job of explaining why we want to get it flat, uh, the rolling for um, the pre-emergent spray. is so that we don't have any shadowed areas when the spray goes on and we get a lovely clean level mat so that anything that emerges gets, um, gets taken up by that spray. Say my fist is representing a uh, lump of dirt that hasn't been rolled and you come over the top of it with the spray, you won't get a full coverage of all the piece of um, dirt that is in that lump. So that's why we roll it out flat. But anyway, all that is left is for me to say thank you to you guys for watching. Thank you to Masons for being a channel partner and sponsoring the video. Uh, I really do appreciate those guys coming on board with me. I'm off to go and give Bruce a hand to feed the calves. Uh, there's loads of links down in the description. Go and have a look at them. There's something there for everyone, all my other socials, if you want to go and follow me on there. And we'll see you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio. Drop